So, you've clicked on this video as you're curious to know what psychosis is really like. And why should you listen to me? Well, I've experienced psychosis twice. So we're now in 2024, or you may be watching this video in future. But five years ago, I experienced psychosis for the first time. So in 2019, I then had the psychosis, recovered, and then relapsed, and then experienced psychosis again in early 2020. So I've seen a lot of videos out there on YouTube which aren't a first person account. They're interviewing people that are kind of in psychosis or recovering, and they're not really talking about what it's like, or they are because it's their experience. I can't challenge what they're saying, but they're not really going into detail. Um, or the other videos are on organizations trying to explain what it's like based on feedback of others. So it's not their first person account. And I didn't think based on my experience, it was overly accurate. So I wanted to give you a true reflection of my experiences. But before I do that, I just wanted to say, some of you may be a little confused, disturbed by what I'm going to say. It may trigger some emotions uh, for you if you've experienced other mental health difficulties. So that's my early warning. If you don't want to watch the video, turn off now. Um, and if you do, stay. And I'll be completely honest with you and very descriptive. So... Let's go back to 2019 when I first experienced it and try and give you a visual representation so you can kind of understand my thoughts. And um, yeah, this will benefit those of you who either maybe thinking you're currently going through psychosis or you have a friend, a loved one, a family member who you think may also be going through psychosis, but you're not 100% sure. Um, and also for others, so if you care for someone who's currently going through psychosis, things I'm saying might also benefit you to help them a little bit more. So, um, when I first experienced it, I gradually went into psychosis mode and I didn't know I was. I didn't even know what psychosis was, to be honest, in 2019. So... When I got diagnosed, that was when I started to learn about it. But it evolved as a, at the start, it was a gradual elevation of energy. And the closest thing I could describe it to in the early one to three days was being heavily dosed up on caffeine and potentially a bit of cocaine as well. So what does that mean? Like highly stimulated you know that feeling of like when you have too much coffee but you haven't had anything to eat before and you get a bit like jittery, uh, anxious, shaky, potentially a little bit paranoid as well. That was what it started to feel like. But using that heightened energy, I started to, uh, I couldn't sit still. So I was like moving around, fidgeting, getting up, walking around, pacing. Um, started like that. But I was also having a heightened sense of confidence as well. So I was doing things which I wouldn't usually do. I was thinking things which I wouldn't usually think. Some of those things were questioning my previous day-to-day -day thoughts. And I was like, why have I got to allow myself to be trapped in these inner thoughts that I think every single day? What's it like if I push out of these boundaries and go, there are no rules. Let's say this. Let's say that. I'm sick of being treated like this, I can't get to this stage, I've always been scared of doing this. And those first few days were a, a push of like, oh, I'm curious to see what it's like. And I started to do these things, and to give you some examples, they were like writing emails to people which I wouldn't normally write. They were being blunt, descriptive. I was, um, if I didn't like what someone had said, I'd call them out on it instantly and with more aggression. They weren't like controlled conversations. And I was quite surprised at the way that people reacted. So the reactions were negative. They weren't people shouting back and probably because it took them by surprise or they, they don't usually come up with someone that challenges them day to day. So I thought, OK, great. Like I can do this more. It's almost working in my favour. I have more power. As the days then progressed. Um, so I actually went after the first few days, went into hospital um, into A&E where I was seen by others 
So if I give you my perception and my thoughts while I was in that hospital first, as it progressed on from the initial sense of heightened confidence and energy, I started to get more what someone would, who in a normal state would call delusional thoughts. And my delusional thoughts, or what I thought were usual and very clear and very certain thoughts, were what you could describe as conspiracy theories. So I thought World War Three was going to happen. I know that's not a conspiracy theory, but um, that government agents were out to get me because I had a clear message and a a confident passion that, or a confident um, mission to implement good on the world. So I thought doing that, this elite corporate organization of um, ultra rich, ultra powerful people, they, they're so aware that they knew that I was in this state and they knew I was uh, this plan, this mission that I was, they was going to come and stop me. So like sending agents, I'd do things like shut the blinds so they couldn't see where I am, walk around with my hood up, things like that. So these were, the, these were my thoughts. My feelings were, I'm very passionate. I'm going to do this. I was going live on my Instagram stories. As some of you that are watching will remember that. And I was saying things like, we've got to do this. We've got to take this action. We've got to implement this. And I wanted people to do what I say. And then from that sort of progressed and got more severe over the next couple of days. So I was trying to sort of tie up what my thoughts were into something that people could understand. So I thought that this spreading good or trying to defeat the evil was like a mission that that God had sent me on. So, and I thought in my head, I was like, right, I have this power. I have this energy. I have this ability that others don't have. Others are sort of caught up in this delusional world and they've been brainwashed and they've been numbed down by media and society. So I thought that I was a religious figure and that religious figure was Jesus. And having this thought that you're this higher power, you have this, um, super ability is quite a common concept in people that experience psychosis so i've been brought up obviously in the uk i'm I'm, i've been baptized so that religious figure was easy for me to go right i'm jesus whereas someone else probably someone's calling someone else um who may be brought up in a different religion or faith could be uh could have thought okay i'm allah and i've heard that other people have experienced that before and that's that religious Um, figure that they've put them or claim to be whilst they're in psychosis so going from there I'd say to people I'm Jesus and then I was sort of convinced that I was people weren't having anything of it I was obviously getting questioned as I would do if I saw someone else in that state and because they were challenging that I then started googling different things and thought right let's google who in the bible is to defeat evil and then started saying that I'm St. Michael to defeat Lucifer and Lucifer being the bad in the world, these bad corporate organisations, things like that. So, OK, that's that's my thoughts and feelings in that point. I then um, I was questioning everything again day to day, like whilst I was in the the ward, the psychiatric hospital and probably my conversations were faster like rapid speech was louder again pacing it around the room that's kind of the most extreme part so that that is quite descriptive of what i was feeling and thinking um to go from there that sort of that was the height of my psychosis and then i had a lot of aggression and paranoia so, like I say, I thought people were out to get me. I thought that everyone was thinking about me in this scenario. I was people that challenged my thoughts and feelings. I'd get aggressive with. I'd start. Um, I'd never be really physical with my aggression day to day, but I ripped doors off. I was kicking bins. I was squaring up to people in hospital. I got secluded for aggression and rejecting medication. Um, came out, and then. This, so those those were the heightened thoughts, as I say, and then my thoughts started to dumb down as the medication was kicking in. It slowed down my thoughts, 
and they came back to normal from what I remember I'd say after around two weeks and then I started to get bored of the hospital which was a 28 day section and then I came out and then I was just really sleepy really tired on the medication and it took me a while to um, for the medication to reduce but I did relapse and then the second the time I relapsed my thoughts were very similar so I don't want to go don't want to repeat exactly what I've said, but that those are my thoughts. Um, yeah, I'm trying to make all... Well, this video, this YouTube channel, started that I was going to be talking about digital marketing and freelancing, but due to the success of my previous video, which I just sat down and filmed, no script, didn't edit, uploaded, no thumbnail, it seemed to perform better, and you guys showed me that it that you enjoyed it more than anything. So it got the most views, most comments, most likes. So I thought I'd make another video on psychosis. If you like this one, drop it a like, drop it a comment. There seems to be a shortage of videos out there that are talking about psychosis, bipolar, any mental health difficulties at a first person account. So let me know and it looks like I'll be creating more videos on this topic. Have a good day, have a good day, have a good day, not have a good die. Don't do that. Thanks for watching. See you guys soon.